Okay. <laughs> All right. I had to conti hit continue too. You probably had to do it on your uh, device too. Hi, everybody. This is Tamara from Moogly, and thank you so much for joining me today. Normally, when I come on for one of these classes, I'm teaching crochet, but today we're crafting, still with yarn, but no crochet skills or knitting skills or any of those skills needed. Um, we're going to be making two crafts, which are both really fun for Halloween. Uh, the first one of which is perfect for making with your kids or just sitting around and making by yourself. I really enjoyed making these myself and I don't have little kids anymore to make them with me. So the first thing we're going to be making is these super cute little Halloween ghost garlands. You can see right here and you can see I've strung these as a garland, but of course, you know, it's a craft. You can put these anywhere you want. You can hang them up individually, um, tie them onto little goodie bags. A lot of people are making goodie bags for trick-or-treaters this year to create that little bit of distance. Tie one of these onto each one of those little bags. You can have a lot of fun with these guys and they're really quite simple. And you can see each one almost has its own little personality, even though they're all the same. So like I say, this is the one we're going to be starting with. And for this project, for the yarn, you're going to need some Red Heart Super Saver um, in white, obviously, to make the little ghosts, and just a little bit in black, some black yarn to string it up on or whatever color you wanna use. And then of course, we're gonna need some other supplies. So let me pull up my tray here. Crafting always involves a few more supplies than you know just a yarn and a hook. So what we're basically making for these are tassels. So you can use a simple square of cardboard um, and there's instructions on the PDF about what size to cut that cardboard. Or if you wanna get fancy with it, if you love making tassels, there's tassel makers that you can pick up at Michael's, um, you know, that make it just that much more fun. They're adjustable. But if you don't have those, then a simple piece of cardboard works just fine. So that's what we're going to be using here today. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to need, uh, the other thing you're going to need rather, is some eyes and for this I picked up these at Michael's and these are some simple crafting beads all in black and these come in a variety of sizes which is really fun too because you can really personalize your ghost there too you know use a big eye and a small eye and you know kind of create those emoticons in a way that are so popular. Um, in addition then of course you need a mouth for your little ghost and for that simply black felt cut into little ovals. So other things that you might find helpful that I used for this project are, um, well, of course you need some glue of some kind, whether it's craft glue or hot glue, um, honestly, whatever works, as long as it works on glue and felt. Um, but I also recommend if you have them, a cutting board and a rotary cutter and a ruler. These are really helpful if you like to trim off your little fringe ends of your ghost a little more evenly these can make it a little bit quicker and faster. So I'll be demonstrating that as well. So let me move this big pile of stuff over here to the side a little bit. And then we're going to move to the overhead camera so I can start showing you those ghosts. Um, but before I get too far on that, oops, gotta move this little camera over here so we can craft. Did we have any questions right up front, Allie? We don't have any at the moment. Okay, awesome. Let me make sure I am following along on my instructions. Again, you can find uh, printable PDFs for both of these projects. Um, I, Allie, do you want to talk? Would they have gotten those in the email when they signed up for the class? Or So you should be able to, you'll be able to access um, all the patterns for classes on the um, on the sign up page, there should be a link where you can download them, but I've also dropped two links into the chat here too. So if awesome. you didn't get them there, you can download them right from the chat. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I've cut my square here and it's about six inches long. The width doesn't matter, it's about six inches long. And I'm going to hold the end of my yarn here, just right down at the bottom of my cardboard. And then I just want to wrap it all the way around my cardboard. So that would be one wrap and we wanna do that 23 times. And one key is you don't wanna pull this really tight. I think the instinct a lot of people have is to pull that yarn really tight on there, almost like you're wrapping a package or trying to tie, tie it up a little bit. And when you do that, it really can shrink up your tassel or ghost or whatever you're making. And it also tends to bend the cardboard and that tends to, you know, that's when you're making a bunch of these tassels and you're like, oh, I don't like using the cardboard, I'm getting annoyed. Just wrap it loosely, just keep it nice and loose as you go around. So that's three and I'm just gonna keep on wrapping here with this yarn. And again, I'm using Red Heart Super Saver, but if you have Red Heart with Love or Karen Simply Soft on hand, those are also great yarns to use for this project. You can definitely sort of 
use what you have on hand or place your order at Michael's. If you're like me, I always like the curbside pickup. That's a big one for me right now. So like I say, the instructions say to do 23 wraps. Now, the nice thing is, of course, this is a tassel ghost. It doesn't have to be exactly 23. So if you lose count, realize, oh my gosh, I did 22 or I did 24 or I did 30, it's fine. You're just gonna have a little bigger ghost. So if you want a little chunkier ghost or a thinner ghost or whatever you like, if you wanna mix it up, make them all different sizes, then you can vary the number of wraps you do as well. So I'm just gonna pull up some more of my yarn here and keep wrapping for a minute. And uh, as always, please do tell us where you're, uh, where you're tuning in from. I love seeing, and I know Michael's loves seeing where everybody's from. Um, all these classes tend to get people from all over the world and it's just so much fun. So, all right, I'm gonna call that 23. Now, while I'm talking, of course, I couldn't count, but like I said, however many wraps looks good to you is great. So after that's done, I'm going to go ahead and just trim off my yarn right there at the bottom of the cardboard, like so. And like I say, we don't want to have pulled it too tight because then all those ends would just shrink right up. Now I'll put that down for just a moment and I'm going to cut a couple more lengths of yarn. Now in the instructions, it says to cut them to 14 inches, but you know, whatever, whatever length looks good to you. It doesn't have to be exactly 14. About a foot of yarn is totally enough. So we're gonna cut those lengths right there. Even go longer if you have trouble, whatever works for you. And that's with that same white Red Heart, oops, upside down, let's try that again. Red Heart Super Saver right there. So we've got our two short lengths of yarn right there. You can see, I'm gonna set one of those aside. And then I'm just going to slip this end right underneath all those strands of yarn. And I do want to catch all of them. You can go ahead and just lift it up, make sure you got them all. And then pull that end right up to the top of the cardboard there, like so. All right, so we've got our cut ends down there at the bottom and we've got our little tie up here at the top. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I recommend that you do a double knot and specifically, you know, this is your standard, just pull it through like you're gonna tie your shoes knot. Send that through one more time, like so. So you've basically wrapped it around twice. If you do that before you pull it down, I find in my experience that knot's going to just stick together a whole lot better. It's a little harder to see there, white on white, but I'm just pulling it closed right on top. Oop, where'd my end go that I'm actually pulling? There we go. <laughs> That's the problem, you lose that end. There we go. Pull that nice and tight right up there. And you can see by wrapping that twice, it's not coming out the same way a lot of times when you just do that one wrap for a knot, how it likes to pull back out. This seems to stick just that much better and not wanna come back out. So I like to do that again though, just to make absolutely sure we'll do that once more. So we just send it through once, like we normally would, like say when we tie our shoes, and then just send it right back through again. So you can see there, it's just wrapped around twice. We pull that down. And now that is going to be a super secure knot that's not going to come out for us. So depending on how you want to use your ghost, if you're going to go ahead and use, use him for the garland, you can um, wait and sew these in at the end, or you can just put them right down with the other guys. Or if you are going to tie him to a little treat bag or something like that, then you may want to leave these up and use these to tie him onto whatever your project's going to be. So for our ghost garland though, we're ready to continue and we need to get these yarns off the cardboard. And Directions may vary. Sometimes people will say pull the cardboard or the tassel maker out and then cut it. But I'm going to tell you, I find it a lot easier to cut it and then pull the cardboard out. And this is another tip that's going to save your cardboard piece. If you're making a bunch of these, you don't want to have to cut a bunch of pieces of cardboard. So if you cut it before you slide it out, you're less likely again to get a big bend in your cardboard. And the other thing I really like is I turn this up here. Hopefully we can get it to focus right on this edge. But you can see this is just a simple piece. This is an old Amazon box I had laying around. And you can see how cardboard has those layers right there. And you can actually use those as a guide for your scissors. So you're going to want a real nice sharp pair of scissors. And you can just sort of put that blade. I don't know if you guys can see that right there in between those two layers of cardboard and almost use that to let that blade go a little deeper and get underneath those strands of yarn, like so. And then <laughs> with sharp enough scissors, you can just gently cut across, but you can use that little groove in the cardboard layers 
help guide your scissors just right across like so. And then of course you can pull your cardboard out and it's ready for the next project. Might leave a little crumbs, but you're pretty good. So with that, like I say, if you're tying this on, make sure that you find those two ends or maybe just pick a couple that you want to set aside to tie it onto a treat bag or something. But if you're making the ghost, you can go ahead and put it down. Now, that said, you also might wanna leave them up if you like to have a little bit of leverage. We're going to be working with hot glue in a minute and having those to sort of hold onto and hold against to create a little bit of tension can be really helpful too. So again, this is a craft and you can definitely take it off in your own direction and use your own supplies, whatever makes you happy. Um, but you know, just, you have lots of different options. And if you lose those two little ends, they get stuck down in there for your ghost. It's not, not the end of the world in any way, shape or form. So then the next step of course, is to turn it into a tassel. Right now it's more like cousin it, right? But we need to get a little head on our ghost. So we're simply going to get our, one of our, that other cut string under there, like so. Sort of get all our little guys straightened out. There we go. And then do the same thing. We're going to tie a double knot, but we want to tie it about an inch or so down from that top knot. Um, again, this is personal choice. Give your ghost its own personality. Some of them can have big heads. Some of them can have little heads. Don't be afraid to um, just go ahead and tie that knot wherever it looks good for you. So you can see again, I went through that loop twice. So it's gonna be a nice secure knot that's not gonna wanna pull out on me. And if you give a little bit of tension on those yarns, Let's see, if I put that cardboard underneath, it might be a little bit easier to see against the white. There we go. We put a little bit of tension on those yarns as we pull through that knot. Let me get it closer there. We can sort of straighten out those little strands of yarn so that we don't get any odd little bumps inside the head. And then just gently go ahead and pull that knot nice and tight. And you can see again right there how that, done, that knot does not want to come out. But just to be sure, we're going to tie it again. So go through that loop twice and there you go. And then you can just let those little guys hang down with the rest. If they stick out funny, if they wanna pop out because of the knot, what you can do is take your yarn needle. Let me find one of them, there we are. And just get that on your yarn needle. And if you don't have a yarn needle, just go ahead and let it hang down. But if you do happen to have one handy, you can use that to just send those ends more through the inside, which hides them just a little bit more. Another, another time when having those ends to hold onto up top there make it a little easier. But you can just send those right to the inside, but otherwise, if you don't have a yarn needle, if you don't usually use, do a lot of yarn crafting, if that's not a supply you have, then you can just let those hang right there. So then our next step, I should check my instructions, make sure I'm actually doing them in order. I already did a couple of these ghosts, so now I've got my own ideas of what order I suppose it should go in, but. Let's see, officially the next thing we do is give these guys um, faces. So let's see, we can start with our mouths. And there's, like I said, there's a lot of supplies. So bear with me for a second. Let me pull up my felt here and my scissors again. And I had some, here they are. I already pre-cut some little squares. And this is how I recommend making these little mouths. You start with this great big piece of felt that you can pick up there at Michael's. And you can see right here, I just cut a little corner out and I made a little strip about the width I want the mouths to be. And then I cut them off in little rectangles about the height that I wanted the mouths to be. And again, this is personal choice. You can sort of hold it up there and get an idea. And you don't have to cut these all the same shape. You can make some, some of your ghosts smiling or you know, a frowny or whatever you want to do. But to make them with the ovals as shown in the pattern, once you've got that little rectangle cut, then you can take your scissors and just start trimming off and rounding up those corners a little bit. So I have to concentrate just a little bit. You can see, I just took off that little corner there and I'll take off that next corner like so and move on to the next one. There we are. And then our fourth one. There we go. So, you know, it can end up a little lopsided. You might need to say, oh, there's a little lump there. I'll trim that one off. But this is what gives your ghost its little personality. So don't be afraid to just get in there and start trimming up 
There, I had to concentrate and look at that. Sorry if I went off camera there for a sec. So you can see there is our little oval. Is it perfect? No, but I think it's gonna be pretty darn cute. So we've got that, let's set that aside right there. And then we need to pick out our beads. So I'm gonna go ahead and just slide the back off this container right here. And you can see it's almost looks Halloween themed, doesn't it? <laughs> and we can start picking out some beads. So like I say, these ones are from Michael's and they come in different sizes. See, well, I managed to pick up two of them the same size. There we are. They come in different sizes. So you can pick out the size that you like for your ghost. If you want little beady eyes or medium sized eyes or large eyes, you can have a lot of fun creating personalities that way as well. So I'm just gonna kind of go for these two medium sized guys, I think. And I'll set these aside somewhere where hopefully they won't spill <laughs> all over my floor. And those will be our little eyes. So get them somewhere where they won't roll away on me. So now that we've got those set up, let me take a quick break and take a drink of water. And I'll ask Allison, are there any questions I can answer before I continue? We don't have any questions at the moment. Okay, well, I hope that's a good sign. So hopefully yeah. it so like I say, the next thing is to glue these things onto our little ghost. Now I'm going to be using a hot glue gun, but you can use craft glue or probably school glue, honestly, as long as it's going to be something that sticks felt to yarn, go ahead and give it a try. If it dries clear, all the better. Now, one tool that I did find really helpful for this that was not on the supply list, but it is over in the Cricut aisle at your local Michaels, is this little pair of tweezers here. And you can see right here, they're a really kind of interesting set of tweezers. Normally, when you think of tweezers, you think you pinch them to grab with these, you pinch to open, and then they hold themselves shut. And this I found to be really, really handy when placing these small items on this face. So if you have something like this, if you're a paper crafter, if you've got these laying around, these are a great tool. If you have an old pair of tweezers, you could use those as well. Um, or you can use your fingers, but if you're using fingers, you might wanna switch to craft glue away from hot glue. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my hot glue gun here. And actually, I'm going to put that back down for a minute. I'm going to get the mouth on these tweezers, like so. I have been literally burned by hot glue guns before. I'm sure you guys have too. So I'm always cautious with these. So like I say, if you're making these with kids, you may want to go ahead and actually use uh, craft glue rather than hot glue. I'm just going to get a little bit right there on my mouth, my felt mouth, that is. Try and pull off the strings. That's the other thing with hot glue, right? There's always a couple little of those invisible strings hanging around. And then I'm just going to, and if you want to, you can turn it over, look for maybe the smoothest place. I like to find the place that looks the best place to put my face. That looks like a really good spot, nice and smooth. Everything looks nice and lined up there. So I'm just going to carefully put that down, hold it in place with my finger and pull away those tweezers. And I'll just give that a nice good press and then that should be dry in a couple minutes and I'll be right there, all set. So up next is the eyes. And if you're using beads for eyes, like I am here, if I pull this really up close, maybe you can see, let's see if I roll it over. You can see there's a little hole. Of course there is, right? It's a bead. What good is a bead without a hole? But you can get different looks with these too. If you line up that hole, oh my gosh, little things, little things, little fingers. Let me see if I can do it here. If you can line up that hole, just right. Again, depending on the bead you're using, you may even get little white eyeballs in there because you're going to see the yarn through it. But again, that'll depend on the beads you're using and the size of those holes. I didn't want the holes to show on mine. Oh, there it is. You can see the little white light, the little white eyeball shining right through that bead. But if you don't want to do that, then you can make sure to turn it and just make sure that you glue it so that the, the hole is more up and down or side to side where you're not going to notice it as much. So once you've got it positioned in your hand, then I like to go ahead and grab it with those tweezers and take my time and make sure it's not going to escape and go flying across the room. There we go. So now I've got a nice good grab on it and I can work with this tiny bead without burning my fingers. So I'll pull in my craft glue gun here and add a little shaky hand there. Let's try again. Add a little bit, just a little dab will do. Of course, there we go. A Little bit right there, like so. So we've got a little bit of glue right on that bead. Pull off the little hair o' blue. And then 
and decide your placement and go ahead and press down. And then I'll very carefully open up those tweezers, maybe give it a little tap. Don't wanna, don't wanna burn my fingers, I glue myself to my project, but there we go. It's already pretty well stuck. So then we can do the other one. And again, I just wanna find those holes. You can kind of, it's honestly easier to feel them probably than to see them. There we are. Yep, I can feel I've got them pinched in my fingers. So then again, I'll just go ahead and pinch that in my tweezers and grab this. So if you really enjoy making these or if you wanna work with beads or hot glue more often, like I say, head over to that Cricut aisle. It's like the first aisle in my Michaels, right there, right inside the door and pick up a pair of these tweezers. They're just super handy for not just paper crafts, but all sorts of crafting. So then we can go ahead and get our second little eye right on there. Gently let go, give it a little push. Give it a second to dry. And there we are. Our little ghost has his own face. I think he turned out pretty cute. So like I say, we've still got these tassels here on top and we could use these now um, to go ahead and like I say, tie it to a treat bag or a project or even your kid's backpack or have all sorts of funs with it. But since we're doing our garland, I'm going to go ahead and send these to the inside. So again, I'm going to use my yarn needle for this. So another handy tool, honestly, if you're gonna do some yarn crafts, having a yarn needle around is always a good idea. And what makes a yarn needle different uh, from a standard sewing needle, that they don't always have this bent tip. I should say that's just some of them, that's this one. But in particular, you'll notice is the size of the eye. It's big enough to get yarn through. So when we talk about yarn needles, for those who aren't familiar, that's basically all it means. It's a great big needle with a great big eye in it that you can fit yarn through. So you can see, I just sent that yarn needle right through the top of the head. Our poor little guy looks a little distressed about it, but I'm gonna gently pull that through. And you really do wanna pull kind of gently so you don't end up distorting the head later. You can see, I'm gonna take my time and just really carefully pull that last end through. And then I can give that a little tug if he did get a little distorted there on that one. And um, let's see, where did it go? I lost that end. It wasn't pulled all the way through, was it? So if I give that another tug, can I find it? Let's see. Oh, he doesn't want to appear. So you know what? I'll just go ahead and pull him back out and I'll do it again. Not a problem. Just takes a little minute here. So that's the other tip I'll have about yarn. I'll go ahead and share this right now about yarn needles. If you have trouble getting your yarn through the yarn needle, if you fold it over to create a smooth edge like that, and see I sort of pinched it right over the edge of the yarn needle and then slid the yarn needle out of the way, that can make it just a little bit easier. You can see right there to get that yarn into your yarn needle. So let's try that one more time. See if I can't get that yarn all the way through this time. Just gotta get it right through that knot in the middle. And then there we go. Now, if I don't let go of that one, I won't lose it and I can make sure it's pulled all the way through. There you go. So it's nice and smooth. So then we can do that with the second one. And the reason I'm taking the time to do this now is because I want to trim off the ends of my tassel to make them just a little bit more even. Um, but this again, this is a chance for you to make your own decisions, make it your own and give each one of your ghosts their own personality. Maybe you want all those ends of your tassels to be a little crazy. Maybe just for some of them, maybe you want some of them trimmed up and buttoned up nice. You could honestly theme these goes for your family members and have a lot of fun with it that way. You know, everybody's a little different. So now we've got our ends sent through there. We've just got our little head at the top. He's got his little face. And now we can address the rest of the tassel down here. So you can see, I'm just sort of straightening it out. And it's always a good idea to just take your time. I sort of run my nails through it. Or if you don't have nails, you can use a yarn needle or the end of some scissors and just sort of pull everything down so that it's nice and flat together. So you'll see we've got some different lengths here. That always happens no matter what sort of tassel or tassel tool I'm using, I always end up with some crazy ends. And like I said, you can leave those crazy. You can take a pair of scissors and if you sort of hold those down together, you can hand trim them as you like. But I have another tip that I want to share today that is going to give you some really straight ends if that is something you're looking for. So I'm gonna set these aside here off my small table and pull up these other tools I have, which are a cutting board and a rotary cutter 
and a hard ruler. You don't want a soft ruler for this. You do want a hard ruler or a yardstick or something like that. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna lay our poor little ghost here out on our cutting board. Sounds a little macabre, but it is Halloween. And then we need to decide basically how long we want our tassels to be. Now I do have one short, one little short guy here. I don't know if I want the whole thing to be that short, but I can decide, it's totally up to me, how long I want that tassel to be. So I sort of try and line my neck up with one of these lines. And then again, just take your time and straighten out all those strands as much as you can, nice and straight, and then decide wherever you wanna cut, whether it's here for a little guy or whatever length you like. Then I'm going to, this little ruler doesn't wanna be picked up today, carefully lay my ruler right over those ends. So again, you can see, I'm just trying to keep it really straightened out right there. And then I'm going to line that ruler up on whatever line I want to cut on, like so. Make sure he's nice and straight there. And then I'm going to put a fair bit of pressure. Um, if I were, if I weren't on camera, I'd probably stand up and actually put my full weight on this ruler right here, because I don't want the yarn underneath to move at all. So with that, I can pull down the safety on my rotary cutter and carefully, watch your fingers, just run it right along that ruler. And it's gonna take a few passes because this is a whole bunch of yarn. But we get through all those layers of yarn, kind of flick them away there and see, put that safety back on. That's really important. These things are very sharp. But if we pull that away, give it our little ghosty a shake here to straighten out, pull that back out so it's a little easier to see against the white background. You can see now those ends are a lot more even. Are they absolutely perfect, perfect? No, but they are a lot more even and they look darn good, I think. So that is it for the ghost part, but now we need to get him on a garland since that is the project we're working on. So I set that aside and pull our other guys back up here. He's ready to join his friends. So let me get these guys strained out. And you can put these as far apart or as close together on your garland as you like, but this is gonna be another time when having a tool like this yarn needle is really handy. Um, if you don't have a yarn needle, you could probably take your time and try and do it with your hands or maybe even use those tweezers, but the yarn needle is really going to make it a lot easier. And as I say, if you do craft with yarn on a regular basis, it's probably something you'll wanna go ahead and pick up next time you head to Michael's. So I've got my yarn needle and I'm going to just go ahead and thread one end of my black yarn, my Red Heart Super Saver here onto my needle. And then simply find our next little ghost family member. And I'm gonna sew him right straight through the head. <laughs> no other way to put it, ear to ear, right in one side of the head. I'm gonna pull my hand up behind it there so it's a little easier to see. Just go right in one side of the head and out the other. Don't have to, you know, particularly look for a spot, just halfway down and right on through. And then if you've got a bunch of these guys, you know, made up, you can just get the next guy on there, the next guy, keep threading them on. And then we pull it on through till we've got about the distance we want from the next ghost. So I believe on the instructions it recommended about five inches, but of course it's your craft. You can space them however you like. There we are, and there we've got it. So here is three of our little ghosts for our ghost garland. Like I say, have some fun with this. Use different eyes for the, you know, for the eyeballs, use different size beads. You can cut that felt in all sorts of different shapes. You can cut the tassels different lengths and just really have a really good time making a bunch of these with your kids or for yourself. Um, and it's just a really fun, festive and reusable craft that you can make for Halloween. So as we finish up that one, and I take another sip of water. Allison, did we have any questions on our ghosts? Sorry about that. I was on mute again. Um, happens. So Maureen said that she's using the long ends of the string at the top to tie the ghost onto the garland. Ah, well, that works too. Absolutely. However you like to do it, it works. Um, you know, that's the great thing about crafts. Make it your own. Make it your own way. I used white here because that is, of course, the traditional, you know, ghosty color. But you could make all sorts of multicolored ghosts and have a whole rainbow of ghosts. I did love the comment I saw coming in six feet apart for social distancing. That's going to be a really longer. <laughs> 
can make some really, really, really big castles. That's the fun of it. I mean, especially if you're using the cardboard, you could cut that cardboard. You could cut the whole side off of your Amazon box and uh, make a bunch of great big tassels for your tree outside or, you know, your front door or whatever you wanted. Um, and then they really probably could stay six feet apart too. <laughs> All righty. So that is it for our ghosts. Um, Let's see, Let, I gotta set all this aside and sort of get reset for our second craft. The next thing we're going to be making are these earrings. Let me pull up the sheet here so you can sort of look at the picture while I grab my next tray of craft supplies. Let's see. So these are the earrings that we're going to be making today. And I will be honest, these are a little bit harder than the ghosts. These were more of a challenge for me. Um, it's probably a little bit more of an adult craft, but it's still a lot of fun. So I have finished one earring and I will tell you right now, for me, there were two major challenges with this pattern. Um, and for some of you, they may be the easiest parts, the, the crafts that you do all the time, but we're going to be making French knots for the eyeballs. And so I have an alternative for that if you can't get French knots because they are pretty tricky. And then for me, the hardest part was cutting out that fringe. So I have a tip that will help a little bit with that. But if you have the same trouble I do, I've also made my little ghost ear, or ghost, my bat earring here. You can see a little simpler. My, my trimming of the wings was uh, not as successful as the designer, but I still think it has that bat shape. It's pretty cute. And I'll be demonstrating here how to make the second one. So for this craft, again, you're going to need some supplies. Uh, the main ones being, of course, you're going to need some Aunt Lydia's Classic 10 Crochet Thread in black to make those wings out of. And then you will need some earrings to put them around. Uh, in the pattern, you know, they found these round earrings, but you can go to Michael's and get whatever style you like. These were some fun hoop ones that were there. And then you will need um, some white thread. And you can use uh, the white Aunt Lydia's Classic Crochet Thread, or if you happen to have some white embroidery floss, that works as well. You can see right here, I've pre-cut some embroidery floss and put that on my sewing needle. You'll also need the gray felt that I've cut, put it in here. And of course, uh, scissors and um, like say this needle and some glue. So yes, I think that's all the supplies for this one. Um, that said, other things that I did find helpful that I'll show in a minute are a piece of stiff paper and some scotch tape, which I have somewhere. Here we are, some scotch tape as well. So I'll be sharing how I find that helpful here in a few minutes. But to get started with these, basically what you want to go ahead and do is first things first, we need to pick out some earrings to put them on. And this was a fun package of earrings, um, again, available at Michael's. And this was great because they there are several different sizes, I think, in here. There's some little guys and then there are some larger guys, but you want to just basically find a pair that's the same size, of course, before you get started. So you can see we've got a couple different sizes there. Find a pair that matches in size, and then you can get started on those. Um, one other note about these, these are interesting ones for those who don't usually make jewelry. You might say to yourself, well, that doesn't quite look like a full earring, does it? How's that supposed to go through your ear? Um, well, this is the part that goes through your ear, but in order to make it close, what you're going to need to do, this is another place where those tweezers came in handy, is put a little bend right in that end, the straight end right there. Let me hold that up a little better. So you see that right there? So if you have a small pair of pliers or tweezers or any sort of little hand tool that you can get a little bend with, you can just grab right on that end there, right there, and give it just a little, might have to pinch the tweezer itself to keep it closed, but just give it a little bend. There we are. And then you can see the metal, the metal itself is relatively soft. And then that little end is what slips through that dot or that hole right there, excuse me. So if that still doesn't wanna go in there, Another thing I found really helpful is you can use your tweezers or pliers or whatever you have again to sort of turn that hole or put a little bend in it. Just gently take your time, give it a little bit of a bend there. And then that should make it easier 
to get that end right in there. So you might have to play with it a little bit um, and adjust it for you, but you can definitely get these in the right shape. There we go. Takes just a little bit of elbow grease. And then there we go. All right, so there you go. You can see once you get that little bend in both of those, you can they get a really great teardrop shape. So if you pick up these particular earrings, you'll know how to make them actually work as earrings, which I thought was an important tip. So let's see, with that said, I've already started a second one over here because after we've got our earrings ready, we need to cut 50 lengths of this thread that are each five inches long. So I found it really helpful to sort of lay out and mark out on my table how long five inches was. And then I could lay out my strand, cut it, lay out a strand, cut it, lay out a strand, cut it. And then I set, every time I set it, cut five, strings, I set aside that group of five until I had 10 little piles. So then you use 25 of those strings on each earring. So just take your time and cut lots of little five inch lengths of your black yarn like I've got right here. So once that's cut, then you start applying them to your earring. And you can see I've already almost finished this one right here. We'll pull that up a little closer, there we go. And we're just going to be tying these strings onto the earring itself using what's called a lark's foot knot. And that's why if you look at the printout for this craft, it actually says it's a macrame craft and it's all because of this one little knot. That's the only macrame part about it. So don't get scared if you don't know how to macrame. What we're going to do is go ahead and pull out one of those strings like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold it in half and sort of match up those ends a little bit. Let me pull this out of the way here so it's a little easier to see. There we go. And then if I lay the earring right over that loop right there, can you guys see that? Let's see. And then I grab that loop and I wanna send those two ends right through that loop. So if you are a crocheter or a knitter and you have added fringe to something before, this is kind of the same, same idea. It's just kind of fiddly because these little strings and I'm trying not to cover it all up with my fingers. So if we get those two little strings through there, there we go. Hopefully you can see I've pulled them through that loop. Now when I give them a tug, you can see how that pulls down on there. That is all there is to a lark's foot knot. Then we slide it down next to its buddies and we do the next one. Got a couple more cut here so we can do those together so you can see that again. Looks like I've got three more. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and fold that right in half so that my ends about meet. Lay that over, the earring right over that loop. Oop, dropped my end, not a problem. Pick it back up, there we go. I'm gonna pull that loop up through my earring. You can see I've got my earring closed. It makes it just a little bit easier. So if I drop it, you know, it's not gonna fall out. And then I want to grab those two ends and bring them down through that loop. So grab those with my fingers like that. They're through and we just give it a little pull. So I've pulled it really close. Hopefully you can see just how that Lark's foot knot works. All right. And then we can just give it a little tug and pull it right down next to its buddies. And like I say, you'll wanna go ahead and keep doing that for 25 strings on each earring. And that's the recommended amount, but again, there is so much more thread on here than you need for one pair of earrings. So you can make tons of earrings or you can add more fringes. If you want your fringe to be a little fuller, if you've got a bigger pair of earrings that you're using, um, you can absolutely adapt this for the earrings you are adding it to. So there's another one, pull that down. So if you've got, like I say, bigger hoops or smaller hoops, you may wanna change the number of strings that you're using but there is no reason you can't, you know, just go ahead and customize that for your personal preference. So I'll go ahead and get those last two guys through there on our last string and give that a good pull. Allison, was everybody able to see that Lark's foot knot pretty good or? I think so. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Otherwise I can try and pull that one off. <laughs> all right, so now we need to just sort of scooch those all down Oops, get that camera still, there we go. Scooch those all down to the base of our earring. And that is ready for now, but we're gonna put that aside 
And next thing we're going to do is we are going to prep our bat. So this is the actual body of the bat. And again, you just sort of gently cut this out of the felt. So let me grab some scissors. We can do that together here. And you can see I've been practicing a little bit. This was a little bit harder than an oval to cut out. It's a little bit more of an interesting shape. You can see no two are probably going to be exactly alike. Now, if you had a little die cut machine, you might be able to get some die cutting for this felt, but I was doing this by hand with my scissors. I also recommend that you do take the time to practice your French knot. If you're not, if embroidery is not one of your main hobbies and skills, I recommend you practice those French knots a few times right on that felt or on a scrap piece of paper uh, or fabric or whatever works for you. So let me grab some of this felt. And again, I'm just going to cut off a small section, approximately the size that I want my finished bat to be. And you can just sort of eyeball it for your size of earring. Again, bigger earrings, you want a bigger bat. Smaller earrings, you want a smaller bat. So I've got my long rectangle here. It looks to be about an inch long, maybe half an inch wide. And I'm gonna start at the bottom and just sort of trim right up to the center in a gentle curve, right there. And then I will flip it over and do the same thing. I'll start right in the middle there. And I'm just gonna cut it in sort of a gentle curve right up to the top. So we've got the bottom of our bat. Now we need to give them just a little bit of a neckline. So I'm gonna come in right, oops, dropped him. Let's try that again. I'm gonna come in right there and just cut out a little notch on each side. So just a gentle little notch out of that side. And then the same thing on this side, like so. There we are. And now we've sort of got like a, I always think of it as like one of those Greek amphoras or something. It reminds me of a fancy vase. Then for the top, we just want to take out a little indent there so that those little two little points create ears. So I will just very gently, a little bit off the top. I, <coughs> excuse me, I felt that sneeze coming, but I thought I was gonna have time to announce it first. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so now we've got our little owl made. And if you're having trouble visualizing it, I discovered it also looks like a little fish if we turn it on our side. So if it's easier for you to cut a fish, then you can just turn it up this way and we make a little bat. Oh, thank you, thank you, Janetta. I saw the bless you. <laughs> so the next thing to do is add our little eyes. And like I said, we did this with French knots and in the instructions, it says to use the Aunt Lydia's Classic 10 in white. Um, if you don't have that, but you do have some embroidery uh, floss laying around, then that is a great alternative or even sewing thread. Um, both of which you can get from Coates, Coates and Clark. Now, if you are using embroidery floss, I found it was a good idea to separate it out and only use three strands rather than the full six strands of the embroidery floss. So this is, this is the part, genuinely, I enjoy embroidery. I want to be an embroiderist, if that's a word, <laughs> but it is not something I have taken as much time to learn as I would like. So if you too struggle with this portion, you can absolutely just tie a little knot and sew it onto the front. If you had teeny tiny beads, I think I saw somebody ask about that, you could absolutely glue beads on there. You could leave them eyeless, it's totally up to you. What I'm doing now is I'm just tying kind of a double, simple double knot there in the end of my string, uh, just so that it doesn't pull through all the way when I begin. Ah, deep breath, wish me luck. <laughs> I practiced this many times, but we'll see if it happens. I'm going to go ahead and just sort of pick where I want that little eye to be. You can see it's a little harder to see on that dark felt there, but wherever I think that first eyeball should be, I'm going to pull it all the way through here gently so I don't get any tangles. And then, yeah, it should stop right at that knot. So this is, this is the part. This is making the French knot. I'm going to pull my needle down quite a bit closer to my project here. I don't want a whole lot of space. I want a little bit, but not a whole lot. I'm also going to trip off, trim off some of this excess because I think it's going to make it a little bit easier. You want to leave enough length, of course, that you can get both eyeballs. You don't want to have to, you know, try and hide four ends, but um, you don't want to have a whole lot to pull through here either. So we are going to 
and I'm going to have to lay this down. I apologize. It's a little bit further away, but ooh, get that all straightened out. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to put it in front of my thread. Let me see. I'm trying to think what I can put down to make it a little bit easier to see here behind me. Maybe this guy. There we are. Does that make it a little easier, hopefully, to see that thread? Okay, so I'm going to pull my needle right in front of my thread or yarn or whatever I'm using, and I'm going to wrap it around the needle twice. And then I'm going to hold it up out of the way, and I'm going to attempt to very carefully send that needle back through the felt really close to where it came out. And if I've done it right, <laughs> which is always a big if with these. When I gently pull this through, it should form a little knot. And I think I've done it. It looks like it is. You can see I'm holding all the thread right down there against the felt. If we pull really gently, it catches. And there we have it. Ta-da! My first successful on-camera French knot. <laughs> you were here, you saw it first. So that is what a French knot should look like. Now. If you can't do that, and I'm gonna, you know, like I say, rewind it. They'll put this up on YouTube here um, in a couple of days. But if you can't do that, I'm gonna go ahead and give this guy a really wonky set of eyes because I do want to give you the alternative in case this thing is just escaping you the same way it frustrated me the other day. What you can do is, again, you'll wanna make sure it's secured in the back, pull your yarn or neat thread or whatever it is forward to the front and just tie a really close knot. I mean, essentially that's what the French knot is. It's just a very fancy way of doing it. Um, and of course it does look very pretty. But you can see hopefully right here, I've just sort of wound it around my finger so I can basically make a knot as if I was tying it off for sewing. And if I pull that through gently as well, just hold it right up against the, ah, hold it right up against the, felt there so that our knot ends up right on top and not down on our thread. And you can see it's a little bit smaller, but that might suit your earrings as well. But we get a little knot there and we can pull that thread then back through and there is your eye alternative. So this, this, little, uh, this little bat's been partying already for Halloween. It's got one big eye, one little eye, but you can see you've got a couple alternatives there. So that's the French knot. And if you don't enjoy that, or if it's the wrong size for your project, then you can simply tie a knot or even a double knot and just gently pull that back through there to get a pretty good looking eye for your bat. So once you've got whatever kind of eyes you like to put on there done, then you can tie the yarn basically the same way here on the back, just to secure it on the back of your felt. So a little extra practice for that one. But we just wanna make sure that it's close to the felt so that it doesn't come loose. We don't want our little bat to have been having that much of a good time. So get that tied off there so that you can trim those ends off nicely. And then if you do have some clear glue, it might be a good idea um, to go ahead and really try and tack those down a little extra back there if you're worried about them. So with that, let me put the needle off to the side here somewhere good so I don't step on it later. <laughs> And with that, okay, now we've got our little, let's, let's pull this guy up. He doesn't look quite as insane. There we go. We've got our little bat body and we've got our bat wings started. So then the next tricky part is getting these little fringes cut. You can see I've already trimmed off some of these here because I was doing a little experiment on the best way to cut these. Now what they recommend in the instructions, and grab my piece of paper here, <clears throat> is that you hold it against a piece of paper and presumably hold it quite firmly with your thumb or other fingers and then start cutting that way. That works somewhat. It worked better than just trying to cut it, but um, there's just, let's just say there's a reason I'm not a hairdresser. Um, getting those cut off into a bat wing shape. If we go back to the picture here, it looks phenomenal. Um, and I am very, very impressed by this particular crafter. So <laughs> what I did find that worked a little bit better for me was if you go ahead and still use that piece of paper, and I don't know what I did with my yarn needle, it's gone walkabout on me. So I'll pull up a different one that I happen to have laying around. And I'm just going to go ahead and really take my time and straighten out. Oh, we're gone off camera. Sorry about that. Let me get back on there. 
take my time and straighten out all those little threads right there. Then this is where that scotch tape comes in handy. And I'm going to tape down those threads. And you kind of have to move carefully and quickly. We don't want them to go crazy on us. So I've taped down those ends, but I don't want to cut it this low. Oops, we'll see. And there, I messed them up. So that's the great thing about tape though. You pull it up, straighten them out again, grab whatever's tools handy. All right, let me try that again. Like I say, this part is a little bit fiddly, but it's what's going to give us that bat wing shape. So I will carefully tape down all those ends down there. And now if I move that needle again, we can see we want, you know, depending on the size of your earrings, again, you'll sort of want to eyeball how long you want those fringes to be. I know for these, when I put my little bat on there, probably going to want them to be about that long right there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take more tape and I am going to tape down right over where I want to be cutting. So I've sort of got that one at an angle there. And then I'm going to do another one at this angle right there. Sort of guide that all together. And I might even just because just because <laughs> it had a little extra tape, really secure it on there. It's not gonna hurt it. We're gonna be able to pull that all off when we're done. Now with this secured, my hope, I've got a little bit too big of a piece of paper here. Let me fold it over and make it a little easier for myself. My hope is that as we cut through this, and this is what I found at the bottom, it is a little bit easier to get through these and create more of a shape. I just need to cut right up to that edge there. And then we can start cutting our bat wing shapes. So if you, you know, if you, if you haven't done this before, I recommend that you start practicing down at this end when you've got too much length, where you've got excess, so that you can really kind of practice this technique. Um, for now, for the sake of time, I'm obviously going to just kind of jump right in. And we just want to kind of try and give a scallop, followed by another scallop with a point sort of eyeball it there right in the middle. You guys see there, I'm cutting right through the tape and the tape thankfully is working so far. So this is kind of getting in my way. I wanna cut this out of my way here so I've got a little more access. There we go. Find that middle again. Oop. I would say take your time, but I know we're running out of time. So I'm kind of rushing a little bit here. Cut that out of the way. And then we'll come up for a second scallop side here. And then fingers crossed, <laughs> cut off that second one. So with all that cut now, pull that out of the way, toss it on the floor, crafting is messy. <laughs> pull up our tape and we'll see how our little scallops turned out. And I think they're not too bad. They're not maybe quite as perfect as the one in the photo, but I definitely think that it was a lot easier to do it this way than it was um, just trying to, like I say, let those hang out there and try and give them a trim or just holding them against the paper. So with some practice, you know, like I say, start at the long end, work your way up. As soon as you've got a shape you like, then you're good. So then the last thing we have left to do is simply glue on our little bat friend. And of course that little bat you can see goes a long way right there. Right there, you wouldn't probably wouldn't say bat wings. Once you get that little bat guy on there, totally looks like bat wings, right? Love that. So I'm gonna protect my surface a little bit here with the back of my bead box. And for this, you can use again, white craft glue, school glue, whatever you have handy. I've already got my hot glue gun going. So I'm just gonna grab that. And then before I put that on actually, I wanna take the time to decide exactly where I'm going to be gluing. Because of course, if we turn this over, you can see there's not a whole lot solid here. It's just kind of that fringe thread. Mainly it's going to be that earring itself. So you can kind of eyeball where you think that's going to line up on your, on your little bat and make sure you've got the back up here. And I'll get some, oh, am I running out of glue? There it goes. 
little bit of glue right there on the back. Again, if it dries clear, that's always recommended for projects like this, or especially where it might show. And then we can simply put our bat right where we want him to be and give him a little press. Now, if I put him down on this, he's probably going to um, get glued to the backer. We don't want that. So if you don't have something specifically for it, I actually went and grabbed um, my favorite old jam jar from a trip to Oregon. It happens to have my last name on it, so I kept it. But it's glass, so it's not going to stick. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that. Give that guy a little extra tap, make sure he's not sticking to the glass at all. And then I can leave him right on there to dry. So like I say, something, make sure you put him on something he's not going to stick to, to dry. This is what my first one dried on. And uh, yeah, so you can see even without those perfect little scallops, I think he looks pretty much like a cute little bat. And these eyes are actually not French knots. These are the ones that are the little, just a little tied knot there on top. So you can get an idea of what those look like as well. So I think that covers it and we've only got four minutes left. So let's come on back up to the main camera and I can answer any other questions you guys might have. I'll slide this camera on out of the way. So did we have any questions, Allison? So many supplies. <laughs> I'm sorry. You cut out a total of four bats and have a backing for it. You could, absolutely. And I was actually, um, yeah, I was kind of surprised I didn't do that for the pattern, to be honest, but you absolutely could. You absolutely could. Um, if you do that, I recommend that when you cut out your bats, you either create a template, um, maybe out of a piece of thin cardboard or cardstock, or even just hold your layers of fabric together so you can make sure they're exactly the same size. Because between earrings won't matter as much. Like these guys aren't exactly, ooh, so it's still a little damp, but you can see these aren't exactly the same size, but when I hold them up, you know, that's okay. But you would want to make sure if you're doing four and sandwiching them that they are exactly the same size. I mean, you could get really fancy with it. You could take, um, you know, other thread, you could, you know, sewing thread, you could sew those bats together, add or all sorts of details. Um, I saw somebody recommend glow in the dark thread would be really fun to add for these. Um, you could definitely get very crafty with these and do all kinds of fun things. Um, you know, and use, use them. I happen to know that this thread comes in a bright orange. You could do some bright orange, just fun castle earrings, um, black earrings. I think this is a really fun crafty idea that honestly, um, yeah, you can take and turn into fashion stuff too. It doesn't have to just be, you know, fun Halloween-y things, but yeah, I think that's a good idea. Any other questions or? Awesome. I don't see any other questions here. Okay. Well then, I want to, or go ahead. I was grabbing my, gonna grab my ghosts and show them again, but they ran off on me. There they are. <laughs> so many supplies over here you guys <laughs> if you can see this whole mess next to me uh, yeah it's a little crazy but yeah there's the ghosts again yay oh oh these are fun like I say this one's a little bit easier you know if you're new to crafting this one's the one to start with but uh yeah if you like these little guys too they are a lot of fun and you can yeah make them your own awesome but, yeah. Well, thank you so much. And thank, thank you everybody for joining another Michael's Community Classroom. And I do believe that we will be back here next week yep. for next hand crochet blanket. So if you're interested in making a huge, chunky hand chunky. crochet blanket, you don't want to miss next week's class. Yes, for sure. For sure. And if you've, even if you've never crocheted before, you don't have to have any special tools, just the yarn. Absolutely. So check that out. That will be listed on michaels.com slash online classes. And then of course you can get today's recording um, available on michaels.com slash classes. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me and I hope you all have a happy Halloween. Thanks everyone.